Are we good? So I didn't actually, I didn't actually do anything. This came back on its own. Looks like, looks like, looks like we're good. I think so anyway. Back for me, okay. Uh, she said, she said 8.30, is she not streaming right now? Is she not streaming right now? I thought for sure she was streaming like already. Oh, very soon. Okay. Probably because okay, he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much, enough, so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. <laughs> oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. Oh, yes, thank you, Steam Elements. I am streaming right now. Jesus Christ. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? No, I did not know I was live, Floofy. Wow, Stream Elements, what would I do without you? You know who the <laughs> killer is. Seriously? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to I say. I think I know who it is. But fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. I think I know who it is now. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Jahiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Did Shihiro's jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow, it's really hard to believe. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was Wait, on his way to go is? exercise. So next we have to ask... I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold it for now. Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! I... I don't even have a tracksuit! Cause exercising sucks! I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask... Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? No, it's wrong! How did you know the tracksuit was blue? Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? 
Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few yep. minutes ago, she said... Because of that moment they had back in the back in the lunchroom. We made a man's promise not to make her not to make him cry anymore. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you you just Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Are... Are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me. And he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. <laughs> It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. Because I hate him. The way he was acting. The way he talked. The way he was acting and the way he talked. So I'm just thinking back to the lunchroom. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. You notice such a tiny detail? Yeah, I answered it correctly. Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No. I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I... I... I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. They actually haven't been all over you. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah! You would never do something like that! This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. Yeah, I guess I'm not getting that motorcycle right. That was fast. <laughs> well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk mm. away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Um, here it is. 
Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Found on the ground, right? Then must belong to Ishihiro's. I got it! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed! I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. Is it broken the same way Leon's is? I imagine is? the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so... fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? Jeez. How precisely did the handbooks get broken? Extreme heat. I'm hacking it by hitting this weak point. Putting a bug. Hitting this weak point. I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Seriously? Yeah, Mundo. I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> who might have brought the handbook into the sauna? Who wore all the clothes into the sauna? It was... Not Kyotaka. Kyotaka took, took off his clothes. It was Mondo. Here's my answer! Mondo. 
Your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? What? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. Yeah, I don't want to believe it either, but I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Did we? Broken E handbook. Hard reader. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Wait a minute. How do I... wait. I forgot how to switch. Let's see. Um, select truth... oh, the mouse wheel. Okay, got it. See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Mm. Shit. See? Look! Fucking white Makoto noise. was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Try again. Let's test Makoto. If what he said, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook, then that proves that what Makoto said is... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Ugh! How did that See? miss? Look! Shit! Makoto was wrong after... Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test what? Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Shit. Mondo's handbook, then that proves that what Makoto... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Ugh! See? Look! Shit! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo what? wouldn't hurt a fly! So then, wait... Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! I could just prove that. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Shit. Okay. 
Let's test Makoto's assertion. This one is different. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Work? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if then that proves that Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! Okay, so... No, it's it wrong! It was that, I just, like, missed it. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall, isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is No, it doesn't, Hina. We've been through this already. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. Not the best Okay. Stuffing, stuffing the trucks into the duffel bag. So let's find, find him. Stuffs it in. Stuffs it in. Goes off. She has to go. Then. Boy, she goes to the boys' locker room. She approaches the boys' locker room. And then. Scans. He's. He approaches the boy's locker room, and then he scans his, his handbook. Oh, 
Fluke is. Okay. I think Fluke is streaming right now. Uh, shit. This doesn't... So he didn't come in until after that. bit more difficult to piece together because there's two different events going on. There's the actual murder and then there's fucking Bianca coming in and changing the crime scene and making things more difficult when the crime scene was already being changed by the murderer, by Mondo. kind of fuck things up for no good reason. He really did. He just made this like so much more difficult than it needed to be. Okay, this, that, no. That, no. It's this. Hmm. 
move on. Write a message. His blood write a message. So wait, he was he was found in the boys' locker room, right? No, he was found in the girls' locker room. He was killed in the boys' locker room. There are some, there are some of these that aren't relevant. Some of these panels aren't like a thing. That's when he brought the extension cord. Actually, not really sure. Yeah, some of the panels are fake in each of these. I think this is right. Yeah, th that all that this first one is definitely right. I think this is yeah, this is dumbbell. Kills him. Blood spider on the poster. Drops the car. Drops the. That. I think that's. That's right. Okay, we're gonna go with this. Here's exactly what happened. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. 
But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Really? That one, that one was wrong? Shit, I don't have enough time. The killer is, is you! With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room. Specific, but how could the victim? Oh, that's Simple. all it was. Because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own e handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there, and the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell. Approach the unsuspecting Chihiro and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Ah, uh, so roll. And then what? Okay, what happened? Shit. Fuck. Ah, uh, I don't have enough time. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Is that last next one incorrect? Then too? removing the bloody poster. Yeah. Then. Here's exactly what happened. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then removing. What? You didn't put the post. <sighs> so then what? <sighs> Since thinking, oh, okay, so yeah, removing the poster and then picking up the body and what happened using the notebook. Okay. Here's exactly what happened. Which is why then removing what? Oh, that was the. Mm -hmm. Is I refuse to give up yet. Uh, sorry. No, it's okay, Jacob. This is like kind of arranged very confusing. Okay, but let's just try this again. Okay, so. I don't have to. Some of these I don't have to. On. He sees it, sees it, and then. here 
I mean, this seems like it's it right here. Picking up the body and then dropping, dropping the notebook. Locker room. Let's go with that. That might be it. The dumbbell is there. I guess that's not part of it then. Last night at the top. That's with bag in hand. She made but how simple, which is what one. It seems. And attack. Strikes him, sorry. And that's where the blood stains on the It was likely in the heat of the moment. Which is why the killer hurried to then removing Yep. Okay, that was it. And finally carrying the corpse into the girls' locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the but this alone doesn't prove that the killer After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. Okay. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. Yeah. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. Yakuya is a fucking asshole. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the Sarn. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook. What was the last thing to happen? The killer is you! And around the killer, there. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. 
And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Owada? Complete. Yeah, it's not over yet. Yeah. Wait. No. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. Evidence that Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself early in the trial. Some are showing Mondo's handbook is right now. Everything will become clear. Sure, let's hear more about this. Fever time and nega time. If you press the space key, fever time will activate and the temple will be forced to its max. If the buttons are random, you won't miss. You can push however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. It only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. It won't be fair if only you got access to special time, right? Nega time that your opponent can use. It'll be tough for the buttons are random. Nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Kid Taco just won't accept his bro as the killer. Yeah, and they only became bros like, I think like, a day, day and a half ago. <laughs> Good luck, have fun. Oh, I'm doing bullet time and Dennis Kiyotaka. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! Strike. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. I cannot believe that word. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll. We don't gotta do that. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Way to go, Mundo. Way to stand up for it. And hey! Yay! I'm so happy. Bro! What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... Give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Yay, guilty. Another child dies. What? Uh-oh. This time it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it is so. The black and that killed Chiyoto Fujisaki was... Ah! Mundo Awada! Unbelievable. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're turning very close to the danger zone, Missy, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. Oh. I, I refuse to believe it. There's no way, no way he would kill someone. Sorry. What, what is this? Why are you apologizing? 
Why? 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 Why did you do it? Now then. Well, this site man was taking a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Ah! Oh, but for anyone who doesn't want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward the text. Wow, okay. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Shihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You are so weak even though you are a boy. He heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness, to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Um. Now, nobody will be able to say anything about it, even though you are a boy, but no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had t already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. <laughs> I'm... weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included in Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was Chihiro's and that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The heart and shell would crack, and the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. What? And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't really want to talk about it right now. But, but... But I also don't want to leave things the way they are, so maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you are a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yep, it sure was! <laughs> the Barker Gang fella had been, painf had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh-huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. Wait, I think... I think they've, they've, that seems like a typo right there. I think Monokuma is supposed to be talking, right, talking. So, he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. <clears throat> that was his aspiration. And he thought the, 
Not only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did. To keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mundo carried your hero from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he made to Chihiro. But... But how does moving the body keep a secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have, been, would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then, Mundo did all of that to keep the promise he made to Chihiro, who he'd also kill? Yeah. Why would he do that? <laughs> the more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why, why did you? Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something you didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? <laughs> it's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That has some, that embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mundo did? He killed his own brother! <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Holy shit. <laughs> Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Wada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mundo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mundo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mundo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. Before anyone knew it, it had grown to the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and as number two, his younger brother, Mundo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But when Mundo started to think about how he would have to take over the game from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mundo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this game with his bare hands. Mundo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. <laughs> Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me! I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mundo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Lay 
lying in his kid brother's arms. The older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but I never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's the team. You and me, put together. It's a pro- A promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the game. In order to keep the game together, and keep the promise to his brother. He can never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Dai was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation of what happened. Mundo's lie became the truth. He wanted to leave the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong! And yet... <laughs> As soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. And at that point, it was clear Ark would have no problem shedding the light on his secret. Mundo killed his own older brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I've been carrying around, it would have been for nothing. So if Mondo never told anyone the truth about his brother's death, how does Monokuma know? Well, I assume that just, like, Monokuma has has connections, like, all over the place. Like, also, how would he know that... How would he know that Makoto had wet the bed up until fifth grade? Like, it's a very, it's a very, very, very minor secret. But still, it's the secret nonetheless. So I just assume that just, that Monokuma just... Just like somehow has garnered information on all of these kids. So that's why. I, that's I, why I. I. Mondo. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head was filled with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swelling around. I never felt anything like it before. I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness... <laughs> turned itself into a raw car lump of anxiety way down in my stomach! And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there I... He told me a secret. <laughs> Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I lied to you. Yeah. Why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you kept this, that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. 
I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I've been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I'm, I should just say it? What? You're saying if I what? really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I've never had. I was so jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making what? fun of me? I'm strong! Are you fucking with me right now? No! I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mundo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn you! Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just wanted to... No, I just really admire you. I admire your, your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. Yeah. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. And stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. Yeah. When I woke up again, he was lying on my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him, down on the ground. Ah! Hey. I... killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. Thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it! <laughs> Look at him, you see? You're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory, for that, he killed another living human in cold blood! He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. You bastard. Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead, dead again, I dare you. Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because the time for punishing is fast approaching. Punishing? You kid me. You mean execution? Well now, well now, well now, well now. That's what I promised you, right? The blacken that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Uh, hold on. Now then, oh, I prepared boy, a very time. special punishment. I prepared a very special punishment for Mondo Awada, the ultimate burger gang leader. Yeah. No, wait, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I said wait. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. What's the store for him? Steal 
the okay huh? The cage of death. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. Execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. <laughs> Said screams invaded our skulls, who we were each forced to realize once again. But if he, of course, he had to. <laughs> what a disappointment! This is the end of the game. Piakia? What is this? You're completely insane, you know. A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However, I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignore the nighttime rule too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late, and I decided to return to my room. This was, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted I spotted Mundo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. What? What? You mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well... So, you're saying you, you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> this is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all of that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about the inside Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene. But... But, damn man, if we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, he would have been dead too, right? <laughs> but obviously I would have revealed the truth before I reached that point. <laughs> of course. Byakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel the sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to absurd remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. <laughs> interesting. Once that you decide to become blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. 
Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next? You... You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is... Why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair, is my gift to mankind itself! What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I'm not over-exaggerating! These punishments are meant to transform all the hope to despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Huh? Mean? What the heck? Mean, 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 mean. <laughs> Good grief, I don't understand why I have to pick apart every little stupid thing. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as a victor. And then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, ah, the exciting. noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. <laughs> and this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I've achieved complete victory, you're up next. <laughs> I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. In the name of the Takami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Oh, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you! I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap! <laughs> Monokuma's left it peeled across the courtroom, and the curtain closed in the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because their mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. <laughs> my, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody'd be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> there were 16 students. There were 16 students. Interesting. Boy's life of despair. That has taken on a new meaning. <sighs> Ten remain. To be continued. Yay! I got the crazy diamond. Hooray!
All right, that's... That's it for this game for today. So I want to guess who the next victim will be. Oh, I don't want to guess, Jacob. I don't want to guess. Oh my god. I am... I did save. I did save, yeah. I definitely did save. Wait a minute. Let me... Chapter 2 ending. Yes, I did save. Jacob, don't scare me like that. <laughs> I did save. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I thought you were on my side. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. You had me scared for a second there. Yes, and then you scared me too. <laughs> Yes, it's okay, Jacob. It's fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this game. And chapter two was even sadder, sadder than than chapter chapter one. Fucking hell. Good night, Jacob. Thank you for joining. I'll see you later. Oh boy. Tonight, t today, today was a really long stream. I think all together. See, I started at two. I started at 2 and it's 10 now. This was an 8 hour stream. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm out of my fucking mind. But Danganronpa is... Fun is a strong word. Um, interesting is more like it. Because watching kids die is not a fun time. It really is not. And watching... So I, I did like Chihiro. I really liked your hero for the oh man he died before I even got a chance to get to know him. Oh man. Oh god damn it. Fuck Jesus Christ. So anyway, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is gonna be another pretty long stream. Uh, it's gonna be Resident Evil 4 again. Uh, I'm gonna be starting Maybe, maybe not 12 o'clock, maybe around like 1, 1.30. Because there's something, there's something I have to get done before, before the stream. But right after, right after I get that done, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hopping right, right back into, um, right back into it. So, I'll, I'll see you, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you guys know on the, on the Discord. Oh, which by the way, um, there probably, there probably are some people in here. That don't that don't know don't that haven't joined a Discord yet. So this is the link to it right here. Yeah, join join that Discord and you'll be able to get all the updates and everything um, when I'm streaming the schedule and all that all that nonsense. And you'll also get me to see, get to see me argue with the bots. <laughs> So yeah, um, join. Uh, we would love, we would love to have you in the River Shrine. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, thank you all so much for joining. Um, please leave a, please follow if you haven't already. Search numbers on this awesome content. And let's see, is anyone streaming right now? Oh, um, Freya's streaming as well. I'm going to, I'm going to be raiding her today. So I've raided, I've raided Floofy enough. Um, yeah, so yeah, let's all, let's all give, uh, let's give Freya, let's give Freya a raid this time around. So I will see you all tomorrow. Until then, Ja Mata!